Hey everybody, I am super excited because today I have American-based baritone Ryan McKinney here with me. Hey Ryan. Hey Marco, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Are, so are you uh, are you familiar with video game music at all? I mean, you know, I played video games a lot when I was a kid and back then it was pretty rudimentary. Um, and I, my son who is 13 is kind of a gamer and so occasionally I'll hear video game music through the wall. <laughs> but <laughs> other than that, no, I'm pretty raw. <laughs> yeah. But but you you have an extensive, you know, you have extensive work in like modern compositions, right? So in theory, yeah. like y- you know modern styles of classical musical writing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, so we have a clean slate here, so let's let's wreck him. Let's uh <laughs> just kidding. Um so by the way, everybody, the first couple of tracks here, these are going to be copyright tracks. So if you want to check these out, definitely go to the full unedited video over on Marco Meatball VODs. Um however, you and I, Ryan, we are gonna start with Skyrim, the Dragonborn. I don't know if, do you know this theme? Uh, I don't think so. Perfect. I picked a lot of like low male heavy songs so i think i think you'll i think you'll vibe yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) screams man yeah totally i feel the testosterone coursing through my veins right now yeah (laughs) Oh, this is so epic. This is another language, like a made up language. Yeah. Yeah. Love all this brass stuff, I thought. Yeah, I know. Super strong, Carnita yeah. Barana vibe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> up there actually right but it's such a um i mean you've sung so much wagner like to me it actually it, it does give me like some like weird like e- even though this is the skyrim is based off of like norse norse mythology and stuff that right sense, yeah it, it does have this like sort of like i don't know like steerman sort of like ah you know like this like very wagnerian type chant thing yeah for sure yeah all that stuff feels like it could absolutely be in the flying dust <laughs> <laughs> They're like all in a boat and like, you know, hauling ropes around. <laughs> yeah. 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 It also has a, like a little bit in that middle last section before we stop has kind of a, like, 
like if Disney did Moana for Vikings, you know, there's like an <laughs> yeah. um, like montage uh, scene where somebody's getting stronger. <laughs> What's crazy is that this is literally the main theme of the game. Like there's no oh, yeah. context. It's just like it's it sets the stage. And what's so cool to me about let me make sure my mic is closer to my face. What's really cool about, um, uh, you know, it, it's funny because in a way it's an overture, but it doesn't it doesn't like sort of give like it. it and it's so different from like something like Mozart, where we really feel like it's handed to us. This is like, this feels like it's like punched in the face. Like, yeah, yeah you want sure. some Vikings, you bastard. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it for sure like makes you feel like you want to do something. Right. So that, I think that's yeah. cool. like, I definitely feel like, oh, I want to play a game now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, um, yeah, it's so active and like definitely manly. I love that. <laughs> yeah. You could, you could put this on your gym playlist for sure. <laughs> yeah. I might do that. <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to shift gears and we will do, uh, this is an American comp composer. Well, that was also Jeremy. So that was another American composer, but we're going to listen to, uh, um, a, this is actually from the traveler symphony. It's from a game called journey and journey. Uh, you play a, as a single character, um, you're this red veiled person, I guess, or avatar, and you wander through the desert and the, the whole allegory, it's, it's all an allegory on life. And at the end you climb this mountain and it's supposed to symbolize life and death and stuff. And at the very end of the game, I'm trying to, I don't want to give you too much context, but then people are like, you should give him context. <laughs> so, so, but this plays at the end and, um, also wintery that the game is wildly popular journey and was wildly successful. And so uh, Austin turned it into a symphony called the Traveler Symphony. And so this is, I was born for this. And there are lyrics from the Iliad, um, from Homer. Well, that's, that's the Iliad. Um, there's, there's so many, I can't remember them off the top of my head, but they're, they feature uh, verses like a, from Joan of Arc and it's in different languages and stuff. So I wanted to vibe with you with that.
it's like such a super contemplative sort of, you know what I mean? No, I love that. Like the kind of, I really like the going back and forth between this feeling of like forward momentum, this da 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 thing, and then these like in between sort of Zen faces of just harmony where the rhythm kind of goes away. That's cool. Yeah. Well, in the vocalism, it's interesting because the vocalism and all, you know, it, it reminds me sort of like what could be considered like some, some sort of like modern oratorio in a way, because yeah. it has this very like poetic thing that's about like, you know, life and, and, um, and I do love that the, the vocal line doesn't feel like it's separate from the instrument line. Like it's all like yeah, one. They're thing. used as instruments. Yeah. No, I like that too. And I liked how the mm-hmm. vocal started out with one and they sort of build all these other voices and then it feels like this kind of gathering of, I guess, like a whole, you know, people or whatever. Um, yeah. I also there was moments where I, it kind of reminded me of some early music, like Purcell mm-hmm. or something. There's a lot of like open fifth and kind of dissonances that you might find in like, you know, or even like Renaissance music or something. Uh, yeah. So oh, wow. I didn't but think about like that. Not, not the whole time, but in a couple of seconds, it was like, oh, that's like, I could, but the thing that's common, like you're saying in modern oratorio where there's a lot of, you know, Celtic or tribal sort of ancient music vibe. Um, and there's definitely a lot of Celtic stuff in there too, which, which I love. Yeah. I'm a sucker for that. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's it's a great piece. And Austin, yeah, he his his stuff, thankfully, his stuff has been able to bridge the gap between like just video games and then he his music has also been featured in a lot of like actual like like programs that are not just video game related. Which yeah, is, I, I saw uh, London Symphony Orchestra was playing that, right? Which is yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Um all right, cool. Uh let's go backwards in time. This is uh from yeah. one of my favorite games. So this will sound maybe a little bit more like the stuff you're used to. <laughs> um, but it still tells a story. This is from Final Fantasy uh, Nine, which it came out in like 1999. Um, I'm just yeah. trying to give you as 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 wide a berth of like a, a range of genres and a range of time periods. Um, so this is written by uh, Nobuo Uematsu, which he's like the father of, I guess in this case the grandfather of um, sort of like you know, he, he started on chiptune and he did all the, uh, most of the final fantasies in the early days. Actually, can I just make sure that FF9 controls it? God forbid I say it's him and then it's not. Um, <laughs> yeah. Nobuo Uematsu. Yeah. And, um, and so the, the song title is called you're not alone and we'll, we, we're not going to listen to the whole 10 minutes. Cause that's an extended version, just like a couple, literally probably a minute. Um, but just the, the like emotional, the beautiful thing about video game music is that it's all, um, programmatic it, none of it's simple and that you know like I mean, you sung it in a million different sort of like i'm singing now um yeah. it's not like that at all and that's sort of what's interesting so even something from 1999 can still have this emotional quality to it so yeah, like, i remember the like role playing when i was a kid even when they were super rudimentary like always were thought of with storytelling I think yeah cool. yeah well, and it's called Final, it's funny because it's called Final Fantasy because when the first one came out, that was their last thirty five years ago. Now that was their last ditch effort to produce something that was going to be considered successful. And then here oh, we are. That's cool. I remember I played. I think I played the first like three or four of those. Oh, on the NES. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I'm gonna. It's funny because I'm gonna juxtapose this because we're gonna listen to Final Fantasy Nine this track, and then the, Final Fantasy Sixteen is coming out in two weeks, and so. Oh, cool. I don't know when I'll release this, but uh, you'll hear like the first track that we've heard from Final Fantasy 16 and see how different things are now. So.
Let me get something there. But it's interesting that, you know, something from 1999 has, has all these elements of melody and rhythm and, and, you know, yeah. layering and stuff. And, I mean, how does that make you feel? Like, obviously it's so different from what we just listened to, but yeah, I mean, well, I mean, in some ways it's also like, you kind of see where like video game music is going by listening to that in a, a little bit, you know, like, I love that, you know, sort of starts off kind of, um, there's a sort of Asian vibe, like pentatonic scale mm-hmm. you sort of, and then the electric guitar comes in kind of out of nowhere, <laughs> which yeah. I, I love. And that, like, I think that's a, it's cool about all these things that like you, they can just mash together all these different genres. But, um, I mean, for 1999, that's pretty impressive. You know, I assume like all of that was done on super rudimentary electronic, you know, I, I don't know how much of that would be live, but, um, yeah, that's really cool. And then the, the voices. Yeah. I mean, I imagine it's all now it's orchestrated and like there are different performances that they distant worlds does a tour and they take all the themes from final fantasy and kind of lump them together but i mean back in the day this was like exclusively midi and i mean and even before then it was chip tune which is like you know basically they take the computer chip and they there's a whole process around it that i am trying to study but you know it's like it 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 was basically computer the computer science it wasn't it wasn't competition so it's like yeah Yeah, yeah. it's because a crazy thing um Sweet. Well, we'll come back to more. There's a lot more Final Fantasy on this, so we'll come back to that. Um, next up, this is another one that will be on the full video because it's uh, Sony owns it, so they, they're not going to let me enjoy that. Um, this is from God of War. So this is from 2018, and I don't know if you saw the recent um, Lord of the Rings Amazon show, but Bear McCreary yeah. wrote the music for that, and he also wrote the music for this. Cool. And this is, uh, you know, I think you'll like this as a bass baritone. up there <clears throat> sorry that's a good one you can put that one on your gym playlist too yeah, for sure no i like that a lot that i love the um i remember this from the lord of the rings series too that like this kind of foreboding war drums etc but then the harmony shift into this kind of uplifting thing in the middle um mm-hmm. i love i harmony is really my like how i get sucked into the music no matter what it is mm-hmm. um yeah i love that and the uh, Again, really interesting. That, 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 like, so it's like Tibetan throat singing in the beginning, super, yeah. super low basses yeah, yeah. doubling like the yeah. main line. 
Yeah. A lot of like doubling and all of this stuff, which I think is interesting, like really supporting the main melody. Well, it certainly elevates it too. You know, the doubling thing happens a lot in video game music. And I think it really aids in like sort of elevating things and causing like the stakes to be higher, which, you know, it's, in- it's interesting because we don't necessarily hear that. And like, I mean, there is doubling in like the Te Deum or something, you know, in Tosca, but like, yeah. Apparently, you see it a lot in video games. And um, what I really like about this, and actually you might, you, you know, if you don't have time to sit down and play this, by the way, you can absolutely watch um, the cutscenes, the CGI mm-hmm. cutscenes. Yeah, um, yeah. It basically plays like a movie. And I feel like, you know, you're a father and this this is the story of Kratos and his son. And, and mm-hmm. you know, his Kratos' wife dies and he has to learn how to become a father. And, uh, and it, he is the god of war of no i'm sorry he is the god of something he's from sparta and he ends up going to the norse lands and that's why you hear that sort of undertone and he eventually tries to hide his former life and and of course the those norse gods come to find him for various reasons and it's it's very powerful uh and and this you know the song is called god of war and it's it's really kratos's theme and so what's cool about video games too is that it's like wagner every time there's a um every time we see kratos so there's a moment with a light 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 motif yeah the light motive every single time so and and light motives are used excessively in video games which is crazy it's wild to me that like that's that's a you know we think of a video game music or even like film music as a separate thing from classical music but of course it like grew out of all the same stuff um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know i'm sure wagner would be writing big video game music right like, <laughs> of all the things probably yeah I think he actually that like would totally be his jam <laughs> they'd probably be really problematic video games but <laughs> <laughs> he would make himself and everyone would be like bro you should just write the music uh, <laughs> don't don't make the don't write the story <laughs> The thing is, it's crazy though that like these these concepts that that you know b- basically every concept. I'm I'm starting to create a video like the most important video game to a uh, ter- or the most important compositional terms that you can know when it comes to listening to music, and and the thing is like I think classical music as a as a as a sort of like social construct is is this idea that it's very like separate from the rest kind of elitist and a little bit you know a little bit highbrow but the reality is is that actually well film music of course but also video game music is using the exact same stuff and there there are a lot more living composers writing for video games than there were at least in the decade that i was in the music field you know so it's an interesting paradigm where it's like does it really deserve the distinction video game music or can we just lump it into class you know i mean i think it's also like us in the classical world trying to sort of hold on to something that we think makes us special in a way, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, you saying that reminds me like, we're always doing these like pre-show lectures so people can understand it. And I'm like, look, if it's good music, you don't need to know what's happening. Right. And I'm, this is the case with this kind of stuff. Like you don't know why you're feeling what you're feeling, but you know that it adds to this storyline. I mean, you can, anybody can sit down and listen to Wagner and like understand the emotions that people are going through. You don't have to go like read an encyclopedia first. And I think, the more we, we make it in the classical music world, like, oh, well, you have to be, you have to be well-read and smart to understand our music. It's like, no, I'm sorry. That's, that's not, that's not how it works. Like if it's no. good. You, you just, it's and I also, you know, it's so cool to me, like the idea of video game music, because obviously like opera composers, for example, are trying to make the audience feel like they're in the story. Right. And, and this is like kind of the natural evolution of that in a way, because you literally like interacting with the story and it's not just, you're not experiencing it only from, you know, a, yeah. a purely static audience perspective. No. And also the fact that like video game music, like I said earlier is programmatic. And I actually, I personally believe, even though like, it's not the truest definition, I actually think that video games are modern operas. And we just, mm-hmm. because, because every single thing has music in it. If, if, or there's silence, which is specific for the reason for it to be there. Yeah. Yeah. It, no, that's why I haven't thought about that, but that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, minus the singing, of course, which is the definition of opera. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's, I don't know. Is it like that's, but it's the, it's the main element historically. But like, if you think about, you know, musical storytelling, um, yeah, I, I guess it's like under a bigger umbrella, but. And that makes a lot of sense to me. I think we should get more like classical composers who are from the classical world to be doing this kind of stuff too, like back and forth. I think that'd be really cool. I, I think we should all do, you know, Bayreuth's doing this like VR ring. Have you heard about this? Oh no, really? Yeah, I think it's the ring. Oh no, it's Parsifal. 
they're like the audience is going to be like wearing VR. I'm, I need to look it up to like be sure that I know I'm talking about, but I'm pretty sure. And I think like that could be like a big future for, and who knows, maybe like everybody can eventually be like, wouldn't it be cool to play a game in VR like with an audience, like with 2,000 people and hear the music? Like, well, of course, you'd have to make the t- same choices so that wouldn't work so well. But well, yeah, but I mean, figure it out. <laughs> find one, someone smarter than us will find a way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. especially with, I mean, because that's the other, th- that's a separate uh, tangential conversation. T- but like when talking about like VR, VR is sort of this like offshoot of what the main component of video gaming is, right? And yeah. then you've got AR with Apple's headset that they just came out with and stuff. And it's like, well, some somehow there's a way to integrate the sitting at home experience, the viewing experience, and also the listening experience. I, I don't know. There's There's a whole... Let's keep going. Otherwise, okay. <laughs> that, that's a very good uh, subject. But so we're going to shift gears again. I think we're out of, yeah, I believe. Yeah, we're out of, there's one more track. Uh, all right, I'll have to do this track first and then we'll switch to something else. So this is uh, Dragon Dragoon from um, a game called Drakengard, which um, it, I can't really explain it to you. It's crazy. And um, this song is called Kuroi Uta. I, I believe this is. God, I don't know if this is and there's this so they created a language for these two games called Near Replicate and Near uh, Automata called the Chaos Language. And the Chaos Language borrows from other languages, but it's completely made up. And I can't remember if this track is from that, if they also do Chaos Language here. But um I think you'll I think I'm curious to hear what your emotional connection is to this piece because it's um it's a weird game that I can't even begin to explain to you and I'm not going to. It's it's very crazy. It's a little bit experimental. It's think like think like avant garde, but not totally. You'll you'll hear what I mean. Japanese, by the way. Oh, 
<laughs> doesn't even resolve. Yeah, I was gonna say that's like <laughs> a little bit crazy ending. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's beautiful. <clears throat> it's still it, it's interesting. I like went through different phases of what I thought it could be about because uh, in the beginning there's sort of like a jazzy vibe, you know, the piano with all that romanticism, and then I yeah. got to feel really melancholy to me, like some kind of regret built in there. And then they're like when the tempo comes comes up and I love the like little in, internal rhythmic stuff. Yeah. It feels like all this movement and I thought, oh, it's like somebody running away from something. Yeah. So there's some like regret involved and lost love kind of vibe. Um yeah. honestly I have no idea what it's about. So <laughs> <laughs> you're probably right. I mean I just don't I don't remember it's complicated, but you're you're right. And I also like that when when Emmy's singing here, um, we we never really she never really like moves like it moves at a quick clip, but her yeah. as a singer doesn't really deviate rhythmically, which is really yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, and it's like her phrases are always long, so if you take away the inner rhythm underneath, then it yeah. feels like a ballad, and then if you put that inner rhythm in, then all of a sudden this is like driving, um, like almost pop vibe you know that yeah, yeah. there's two almost two very different songs even though she's basically re repeating the same motive over and over, over and over i know yeah it's, it's really cool yeah all right so that's more on the fringes let's get into some more uh modern stuff here all right <clears throat> um um okay also we're coming up on 43 minutes you you good yeah i'm good i'm having fun so all right Keep going. <laughs> There's always an escape clause if you need to. <laughs> no, I'm good. Listen, we got to get like at least eight tracks in here. That was all like stuff that I can't even put on the actual channel. So <laughs> no, I'm happy to hang out and do this longer. <laughs> cool. 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 All right. So, all right. Unsung War or Faceless Soldier? Which of those two would you pick? They're very different. I think Unsung War. <laughs> okay. It's one of my favorite songs ever. Hold okay. on. You're gonna lose your absolute marbles when you hear this. Maybe, maybe you won't. I don't want to. I don't want to build it up too much. But... <laughs> uh, all right. So that, well, this is "Unsung War." Uh, this is from Ace Combat Five, and I want you to understand that when I first heard this, I was like, "Why do people want me to listen to music about fighter planes?" <laughs> Ace Combat Five is literally about flying airplanes and you know high flying daredevil top top gun types type stuff but uh just wait till you hear this i think i think you'll be happy I'm gonna make you listen to the whole thing too. Thank you. 
we can stop there. <clears throat> but also, you know, if you look at the lyrics, like when history witnesses a great change, Ras Gris reveals itself first as a dark demon. As a demon, it uses its power to rain death upon the land and then it dies. However, after a period of slumber, Ras Gris returns this time as a great hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, it's so epic. I love the, um, well, those big splash chords and then the just like pedal tone with the chorus above it that like builds in these mm -hmm. waves. So cool. And uh, there's something that d there's like a descending brass line at the end of each section that reminds me so oh. much of something. And I can't figure out what it is, but I love that. <laughs> It's just crazy. This is literally a game about like fighter planes, and and the, they have like yeah. all the Ace Combat community has this whole saying that's like you're 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 a really tough shit until the sky starts speaking Latin. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> every time there's like a big set piece, there's the Latin in there, and it actually opens up a broader discussion about like, you know, we we think of Latin from like you know the oratorio or de right. you know the requiems and things, but there there's a whole world here. That Keiki Kobayashi, the composer, is somehow able to take, like, you you hear the drum set in there. It's somehow combining yeah. this, like, old with this new in this deliciously, yeah. like, fantastic way that just makes your blood just like, mm. Yeah, I love, I think that's a, maybe a theme through a lot of these things you're, you're playing for me is um, there's a, there's always, or almost always kind of this ancient element, which I love the Latin choice, right? Because it feels like it, the dead language makes it feel like it's somehow, from a past that's further away mm. um mm -hmm. but then also yeah as you say drum kit and like this the kind of military and in a modern military way the little um drum riff over and over and yeah personally made me think of things like hunt for red october <laughs> like, you know, yeah like, i mean that makes sense <laughs> but yeah no it's uh I love especially the big like uh sort of unexpected like flash chords and then it disappears again um yeah that's good that's what makes me to play this game <laughs> <laughs> uh all right next up speaking of ancient and then we're going to shift into a different genre here pretty soon but uh actually you know what mm, let's get a palate cleanse let's listen okay. to uh something I, this is six minutes you either love it or you'll hate it i okay. said you were okay <laughs> you said you were okay with metal so I'm, I am. Yeah. I'm gonna give you metal. This is Mick Gordon. The only thing they fear is you. From of course the classic game series Doom, which is still alive and well. And uh, this is one of the. I mean, 28 million views from two years ago. This is. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Be prepared. Your your ears will bleed.
Was that the fastest seven minutes of your life, Ryan? I, I gotta tell you, I think that's my favorite one so far, Marco. I picked all these classic Man, I love that stuff. Like, okay, first off, that's not like my first thought was like White Zombie, and then. <laughs> And then we were in Pantera for a while, and then yeah. Night Sales. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a fan. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so cool. <laughs> it's nuts, right? I mean, the Mick Gordon. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like it, there's actually there's another one I almost played for you where they literally they have an entire ensemble of heavy metal sc- scream singers, and they're all just right. screaming and Ooh. singing at the same time. I'll send it to you privately, but like, okay. yeah, it, it's. Well, shit! I gotta change my whole thing here. I have all this like very, it's like like That's classical funny. music. I just hell with you, Lisa Sorosco too. I sure I brought yeah. you. It's like I think you brought me here to make me realize I don't like classical music. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the truth is I don't listen to classical music all that often. I guess it's my my job, but no, i that that was cool. You know, I'm also like noticing. I think is really interesting. This is actually very similar to opera, but like. If that were a song like you were going to hear on the radio, it would be half as long. And like the like expectation of when something's going to change would be shorter. Right. And like so everything's extended in a way, which I find really fascinating. Like moments where I thought like the drums are going to come in hard and it took like another three oh. phrases. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess that's just because like in the genre of video games, like you're you're not your your purpose isn't to sit and listen to the song. Like you're going through something while that's happening. So it's like spread out um which i kind of love actually i think a lot of the like you know experimental bands that'll put tracks out that are 12 minutes or whatever because they don't care about if it gets played on the radio it's like for the like whole experience of it yeah that was, yeah. That was neat. well shit all right i might have to get you another crazy theme here but uh, <laughs> I, we'll, we'll come back to that so uh, okay. i guess i'll just keep up with what i've got um <laughs> i've got like mostly like i like the other things too marco it's okay <laughs> yeah i know but this is like yeah. Um, so, so something really cool. There's a game that is out called Genshin Impact, and something that's really amazing. Um, speaking of ancient languages, um, is that they have um, they they. It, I really do feel like it's the modern evolution of classical music, in that they are not afraid to play with and use different instrumentation that we would standard, you know, it, it kind of believe in. And so in this theme, Azdaha, Azdaha is a giant uh, monster. Uh, um, he lives in a cave and um, they use <clears throat> they use uh, traditional instrumentation and uh, like traditional Chinese instrumentation as well as other things. And they also use ancient Chinese when describing uh, the story of Azdaha. And so in this particular piece, I just want to listen. It's a not, it's an eight minute piece, but I just want to skip to like, hang on, let me just. Yeah, let's, we'll go to like uh, 345. Did I send that? Did I send that to you? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Um, we'll just go to 345 and then I just want you to hear, it's not quite as hard as uh, the only thing they fear is you, but um I do like there's a certain thing in here that they do that is super impressive and and fun. Has such a verity ending, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> this first phase. So we're moving right into phase two right now, and you'll hear a big shift.
It's interesting, right? Oh, I like it. It's, I think, I mean, again, like the mashing together of all these different genres, like works so well, but you know, but there's clearly like a little more classical music influence in that too, at least like in the supporting harmony and stuff. But I love the main melody in Chinese. That was really cool. The fact that they also like take an Arhu mixed with electric guitar mixed with like mm-hmm. traditional ancient Chinese, like text mixed in with Western instruments. It's just like such a yeah. crazy amalgamation that I feel like we don't really get to explore when it comes to traditional Western operatic or classical writing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love to the, I, I like, I'm a sucker for this in any kind of music, but the fast six eight that that shifts into the slow mm-hmm. six eight. That the whole vibe, even though like the harmony and the melody are doing the same thing over it. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 That's uh, really cool. All right. Sweet. Um, one, two, three, four. I, I'm changing my system up. I'm changing, <laughs> okay. I'm changing everything. All right. Hold on. How much time you, you I'm good until four thirty, but we don't have to stay that long. You want to do another, like, mm, whatever we're probably doing 10 to 15 more minutes, 10 to 15 more minutes. All right. That's good to know. Okay. Let's do, I will do, do you like EDM? Yeah, I do actually. All right. Hold on. We'll just do bites of pieces. We won't do the full pieces. That way you get a. This is really cool. This is from a mobile game. I mean, Genshin's also a mobile game, but this one in particular is, is a game that I actually fell in love with. Um, it's called Punishing Gray Raven. It's a super dark uh, game that uh, we'll just listen to. Let me just find a spot that we can jam out to. Hold on. Yeah, let's uh, swing over to 315. And this takes place on a train. Uh, it's called Dust. You can kind of guess why when we listen to it. <laughs> Yeah, we can stop there. Cool. It's fun, right? It's just like yeah, I think that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. That, I mean that the the rhythm of it, the vibe is so like energetic, and again, like I love the sort of extending the melody over longer phrases than you expect. And the voices coming in was totally unexpected. That's cool. It's the best part, and then, like the sick drop like that just like sets it up so well, and then it's just like boom, right in your face. It smacks you. It's yeah. it's amazing. Um, okay. Short and sweet. That, that one's a good one. Um, all right. Then I want to do, I've been playing this for everybody, but I really feel like you'll get an absolute insane vibe out of this one. So I'm just going to go with it. This is from a game called Ultra Kill. Tenebre Rosso Sangue. It gets better.
can stop there. <clears throat> that one goes hard, huh? Yeah, I, the the organ is like stroke of genius for that. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like uh, giving me old school Castlevania vibes. Actually, <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, ah, yeah, that was fun, and the du- like double bass drum action. Mm. Like, well, it has. I don't think I've like, ever heard organ in like that kind of metal music, but it works. That's what I'm saying. It's absolutely insane. Uh, yeah. The fact that this is like you know uh, this is this is a game made by one person. Oh wow! <laughs> and this is this uh, this the the organ uh, band is called Key Gen Church, and they just like it's this combination of like metal and organ, and it syncs up. And I just I love playing it for classically minded folks because it's so different from what we're used to. But it has this like Bach yeah. Buxtehude vibe to it, which is really satisfying. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's really cool. All right, word, word. Yeah. All right. I'm changing up everything. All right, hold on. <laughs> We're almost done. Do you sing in Russian a lot? Yeah, I, well, I used to more. I haven't recently, but I have sung in Russian quite a lot. Cool. Let's check out this piece then. This is called uh, Ark Knight's uh, Requiem. This is from uh, uh, another mobile game. I play a lot of these, but the music is so good. The the the, the production value is is so it's it's it's, it's crazy. Uh, we'll just listen to like the first verse and chorus of this. That's a good place to stop. I love that. Yeah, me too. That low baritone with the like octave above and super tight harmony in between. Ooh, so good. It's so good. Yeah. It, it it's really like has this like traditional folk song element to it, you know, while yeah. having a, a a modern sound, if that makes sense. You know, it reminds me of the Russian songs like, you know, that I've studied or even Eugene Oya yeah, for sure. Theory. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, adding the guitar underneath gives it like a singer songwriter vibe. Um, <laughs> in, in the beginning, you like don't realize it's going to turn into a more like with the chorus and sort of more epic feeling. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, I know it's really good. Well, Ryan, um, I'd love to know uh, t- why don't you tell everybody about yourself, and then uh, we've got like two more songs to listen to, and then and then you're free to go. Uh, but like, let them let them know who you are. Yeah, so the main thing I do is that I'm an opera singer. <laughs> um, and uh, I also have a family I drag around with me, my wife, Tanya, and my kids, Emma and Lewis, uh, follow me all around the world. I also make films randomly, um, which has started during the pandemic, and, and primarily opera films. Um, yeah. What else do you want to know, Marco? <laughs> That's about it. That's the short story. That's the short story, yeah. <laughs> Check me out in uh, in September. I'm I'm seeing Dead Man Walking at the Met to open their season, and uh, even if you're not in New York, it's going to be in movie theaters. Uh, I believe October 22nd. I think 
That's the, that's the um, premiere of that opera at the Met too, no less. Yeah, it's the first time they've ever done a Jake Heggie opera at the Met, and the premiere of that opera at the Met. It's it's about time. It's a great piece, and it is just Donato and Young Lunez again conducting. So it should be pretty cool. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm excited. I want to come see that actually. Um, all right, two more pieces, and then I will grill you on your impressions on video game music. Um, this one is a famous one. Uh, there's a, uh, I'll, it's from a game called Destiny. Uh, it's called uh, Deep Stone Lullaby, and um, I think I will be very curious to hear what you think of it. It's a beloved piece in the Destiny community, and it's, it's yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's a beautiful little tune. That is beautiful. <clears throat> the, I love the harmony and the like. Yeah, it just has a kind of peaceful feeling to it. Also, so the, last... the way that they handle the reverb and it sort of. I, I mean, I don't know this game, but it has a feeling of like huge amount of space. You know, <laughs> sort of like it's, it's in, in space. space. Yeah, you're in. Space. You're in space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> in that yeah. moment. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're in space and you're on a spacewalk and you're actually jumping around a satellite to get to this uh, ship that's about to uh, fall down and this character Tanex wants to nuclear blast the the world and you you stop him and then yeah and this is the moment as you're like actually technically this is the song that um humans can become these things called exos which are half robot ro- synthetic things and this apparently is the last thing they hear before they go to sl- their eternal sleep before they become oh, this wow. non human yeah so this That's is cool. like yeah that totally makes sense yeah, yeah. it's a kind of danger but peace to it also 
Mm-hmm. All right. Well, since you loved, uh, since you loved, uh, this is what you are. I've got another thing, and then, uh, and then I'll let you go. Um, I guess. Oh, all right. I'm going to ask you these questions now, and then we can okay. end on this one. Um, cool. Well, I guess, like you know, having listened to what we've listened to today, has your opinion or perspective sort of changed as to what you perceived video game music to be, or like, or do you feel like it's, you know, what were you kind of expecting going into this, and what have you kind of come away with? Yeah, I mean, I think I knew sort of. Uh peripherally that video music had made huge strides you know in recent years and uh so i, I kind of thought maybe i would be surprised in the way i have been but yeah that you know what goes into it um and the different i think that the way that so many genres of music are put into these things is really interesting and and surprising to me um and it's how much it is like you're saying programmatic it really makes you feel what you're going through it's really clear emotionally um and kind of the the pace of it is surprising to me how these moments can be extended very much like opera um yep. where it doesn't have a an obvious tight song arc to it um, yeah and it makes me want to play some of these games <laughs> well you have do you have a playstation at home they have an xbox i don't home? i don't i should have one time to but, time to buy lewis you know, i'm the the time, man. Yeah. I know, that's true. With what time? I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Well, um, was there a song that stood out to you that you liked the most? Well, this is what you are, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, just because, I don't know. I, I, I actually listen to, like, heavy music a lot. <laughs> like, that's totally my jam, so, yeah. Oh, very <laughs> Well, this is a uh, this this last song is uh, one of the most memeable songs. It fills you with determination and with motivation. And um, let me just find a sweet spot for us to start because I don't want you to listen. That's very long. Okay, we'll do uh, five thirty-five. This is from a game, uh, Devil May Cry Five, and these are basically the themes that are played for the characters while they're fighting. So they're they are intrinsically light motives, which is really interesting. All right, I'm queued up. All right, five thirty-five. Here we go. Three, two, one, go.
my other favorite one, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. I, I, awesome. I mean, that that singer reminded me of a little bit of Tool. The vibe of it is mm, awesome. Mm. That um, I love that little like the voice and the bass and guitar all riffing together and triplets there at the end. That was really cool. It's just another yeah, song like, that deviates from expectation because there's like four yeah. different clear sections. It's not ABA, which is so boring. Yeah. Very like verse. Now, that's the interesting thing about a lot of this stuff is that there's a kind of often like variations on a theme rather than like chorus verse. Um, yeah. yeah. Which is, yeah, a lot more like Wagner or something like sort of three composed um, opera. Yeah. It's crazy, right? I mean, yeah. it's just nuts. Yeah. Like well, look, Ryan, I mean, uh, thanks a ton for, I know, you know, your schedule is insane. So thanks a ton for coming out and like checking this out super fun. with me. And yeah. Oh, and, thanks for asking. Yeah, I really had a good time. I learned a lot. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, of course. And uh, of course, everybody, there's lots more of this on the channel. If you'd like to uh, like and subscribe, that helps us out. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Check out more. And uh, we will continue the, what is this? What am I doing here? The video game, uh, 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 information dump to people that want to come and check it out. So <laughs> thanks a ton as always, everybody. And we'll see you on the next episode. Bye.